So let's start probing with this little function generator. And uh, let's first start uh, with the supply voltages, how clean they are. And you see the positive voltage has around 200, 150 to 200 millivolts peak peak high frequency noise overlay and the negative supply a little less but also 100 millivolts peak to peak uh, noise. Now that's quite a lot. Uh, let's remember this is basically a high frequency function generator. So for a device in a test and measurement equipment, however small this is, uh, there should be more decoupling. I've also compared the value of the decoupling uh, capacitors and they are all on the low side. So not in the recommended value range. And uh, the result is that we get this noise on the power supply and this noise at least partially will also probably show up in the output. So next is we'll start with the square wave. So the duty cycle is set to 50% because neither the we have a suitable high frequency connector here nor does the PCB uh, layout look very much as you would expect for a high frequency uh, device. I expect the output to be not very clean, but let's see. So before we check the signal quality, uh, let's first try how well we can control the output amplitude. So the maximum output is determined by the power supply of plus minus 5 volt. And because we have a rail to rail uh, op amp, we can get nearly plus minus 5 volt or 10 volts peak peak at, as maximum uh, output voltage. And if we turn the gain potentiometer down, Let's see how fine we can control the output voltage in the millivolts range. And I've tried this before and it nearly looks to me they, that they in fact did use a logarithmic potentiometer. We're at the moment down to around 300 millivolts peak peak from originally 10 volts peak peak. So that was really fi uh, finely controlled and now of course we're getting some noise and we're now down at 100 millivolts peak peak this would be a voltage that is already suitable for for checking uh, audio e equipment so i've put a little filter on the on the trigger input so that we get a more stable display and let's see how far we can get down. Of course now we're getting some noise here from the output but um, we're now and this this is the end of the potentiometer range but we can get relatively a relatively good fine control. Uh, we're now down at 40 millivolts peak to peak and uh, now it goes down in the noise. So I'm quite surprised this would have been well 20 millivolts peak peak. Um, I'm quite surprised that we could get a really fine control for the output voltage. And uh, this is much better than in the original uh, XR2206 function generator without my modifications. Um, so I'm quite content with, it, with that. And a nice detail is in most frequency generators or function generators, the offset is let's say plus minus 5 or plus minus 10 volts. And this is also the case for millivolt signals. But here, because we have a dual uh, op amp, one is only working uh, for the offset and the second one is only for the gain. 
that means you can offset your signal um, around two and a half times of its peak to peak voltage. So for example, we now have 200 millivolts peak peak and we can shift the signal around no more than 400 millivolts upward and downward. Uh, so the control is of the offset is also relatively fine and uh, depends on your uh, peak to peak voltage. So again, we're now having 200 millivolts peak to peak and that is shifted downwards 300 millivolts downward. So it's a factor of of around two and a half times your peak to peak voltage is the offset to the negative as well as to the positive side. So that's quite nice. So I'm quite content with the with the control um, of the output amplitude and of the offset. Uh, but the signal has some serious noise probably from uh, from the power supply and also from the non-ideal PCB layout. So the frequency at the moment is one kilohertz, so we're right at the standard frequency. Now next let's check the duty cycle. So when we now change uh, the jumper from the 50% to the variable, range. We could measure this. Uh, I think it's from from 15 to 85 percent duty cycle is the range that you can change it. We are now having 92 percent and now 10 percent. So all in all we can change the duty cycle between 10 and 90 percent. A bit more than in the data sheet. And let's see if this also works with the triangle wave where we get then a positive or negative slope sawtooth. Yes, and this also looks quite nice. So this works quite well. Let's put it back to 50%. Now from the sine wave you can't expect this to be as clean as either from a true analog function generator with a Wienbridge circuit or something like that, or from a DDS generator, which can generate clean sine waves with much lower than 1% total harmonic distortion. Uh, this one is from the data sheet around 2%, but you can see here there's a little bit of jitter and I already recognized this also uh, here in the in the square wave you also can see that the edges are jittery and this is also from the bad PC layout and from the insufficient uh, decoupling with too low values uh, from the decoupling capacitors. So, but what do you expect from a cheap Chinese engineered function generator. Now let's go up to the to the highest frequencies and see how the signal looks like there. I'm directly going to the highest range. So on the highest range when I put the, the frequency potentiometer to its lowest value we're having 1.7 megahertz and uh, this is the square wave or what remains of it and you see the jitter is, is much more pronounced now. Uh, so not only that the signal shape is not very squarish uh, but it also has a lot of jitter. And now let's turn up the frequency and now the signal we are at 4 me megahertz and the signal uh, looks already more like a triangle. And if we change to triangle, well, this looks still relatively good. And at least you can differentiate if you have the sine wave, the triangle or the square wave. And let's go to 10 megahertz. So now you see already the amplitude is going down. 
uh, probably because either the used op-amps are not fast enough or because of some attenuation in, in the PCB layout and in the non-high frequency connector that we're using. So let's stay at 10 megahertz and see again the jitter has become more pronounced still but and now you nearly see no difference between sine, triangle and square wave. It's all more or less the same. So I would say you, you still have a signal but the amplitude and uh, the shape of the waveform are due to the limitations in, in the in the PCB layout and in, in the overall circuit layout. Um, it's still usable uh, but not in all the functionality that the Max 038 would basically give you at, directly at the output of the IC. So and if we still go up to the maximum the internal frequency counter doesn't work anymore because the signal is simply too bad. But this is the end of, of the range. We are at 20 nanoseconds per division and a 20 megahertz uh, signal has 50 nanoseconds of period time. That would mean two and a half divisions. And that's not quite where we, we are now. So we can really get 20 megahertz, but this signal is no longer useful for anything. So, and if we go down again with the frequency, you can see this extremely high jitter here. Perhaps there's also a little bit of amplitude modulation, modulation I don't know. Um, but I have uh, semi-professional function generators based on the same uh, chip and they give a much cleaner signal. Uh, so the Max 038 was really capable of giving you uh, relatively good uh, signals and you could really work with it, let's say up to 10 megahertz, but not with uh, this cheap circuit. So once again, some design falls in the circuit layout and in the PCB layout. This could have been better, but uh, anyway, if you need a cheap function generator that goes up to, let's say, 5 or 10 megahertz with useful signals, this might be something for you. Otherwise, uh, I would not recommend this kit. So that was it.